day I invited Carson at my gym. And if he gets tapped out by everybody like I expect him to, I'm kicking him out. Hopefully he can prove to me he's more than just a fake blue belt with a knee cut and a triangle, but let's put it to the test. You can't get out to say my name. Now the best way to see his skill level is to give him three different ranks. He'll be going up against me, a purple belt, and a blue belt. Let's see how Carson does today. Now it should be pretty obvious that I can submit Carson anytime I want. And if you don't believe me, then you missed out when he trash talked me. So I gave myself a challenge by forbidding the use of guillotines. But that doesn't seem to matter too much because I go to single leg X and I easily get him with an ankle lock while he's still standing and I didn't even have to break his posture down. It's a little embarrassing how quickly that happened, but I'll give him the benefit of a doubt. He probably wanted to block out our previous role because it was so painful for him, and he forgot that I like the ankle guillotine. But I also like wrestling, so when he tries to run away, I go for a quick body lock and I completely telegraph my attack. Carson has no response except for a huge thud. Now that slam was painful. And I even gave him enough time so he could try and react, but his arm was trapped, making it that much harder for him to defend, and he's still stuck with me controlling his backside. The next part of this systematic beatdown is to constantly use that black belt magic where you somehow float above them, never commit to any attack, but they also can't escape. And part of what allows me to float is because I'm using my shin to keep him down versus sitting on my butt. Being on your butt is great for pressure, but I'm looking to beat Carson down with style. And that second part of beating him down with style comes in here where I'm digging in with my right hand going underneath his armpit. Because I'm positioned behind him, this could be a pretty easy neck crank situation, but I have a different move up my sleeve. This is called the stinky foot attack. Which was all a secret setup for an armbar. <laughs> This is definitely not how Carson wanted to start his day, but I bless him by starting on bottom so he doesn't have to deal with any more wrestling as we saw how that went. To try and build some momentum, he attempts using Toriandos to go around my guard, but he's not chaining any of them together so it's too easy for me to regain my guard and then I'm able to get in with a shoulder lock. I would really love to be able to get my left leg around his head, and he makes it that much easier for me by popping his head on the other side and I'm able to go to the figure four and hit him with a very slow but second armbar. We slap and bump again with Carson hoping that the fourth attempt will do much better than the last ones. This time around he has a heavy focus on trying to hit me with that knee cup, but my reverse de la Hiva is going to make that difficult. I'm using my right foot to elevate him and keep his weight off of me, while my left leg works as a butterfly ashi going from behind. He retraces his steps walking backwards to undo my hook, but now my right butterfly hook is extra powerful from here. Good guard retention means not letting your opponent smash you with their weight. I'm using my right leg to elevate him and I'm using my other foot to stop him from going for knee cuts. Then when I go for a leg entanglement, I catch his knee and he taps. I have no idea why. But when I finally thought it was going to be tougher as he tried a knee slide, I elevated him all the way over, found his right foot which looked like a tasty snack, and I sat down into another ankle lock. I definitely noticed Carson was weak, and I was smelling the blood like a shark pushing the pace on him, as if it was any different from before, and I was going to show him my own guard pass. By using my right arm to split one of his legs and my hips to split the other, it was easy for me to sprawl out until I could kick my leg free and pass right into side control. I made sure to keep control over his hips so he wouldn't be able to shrimp while also putting a lot of pressure on his arm until I took mount. But then I made things a little dirty. I actually tried to smother this guy, and sure it didn't work, but it gave me something even better. This was supposed to be a no-gi bow and arrow choke, but he tapped out like 5 steps too early. The one saving grace for Carson is that the round was pretty much over, or at least that's what he was hoping for. I initiated the round by getting on top with an ankle pick, then I snapped him down with my favorite guillotine grip, and I put him in the same position as before where I could split his guard, except this time I was just going to backstep to get into side control, then take mount. And I ended the round by crossing him up, but I wasn't gonna let him out just yet. Person, you can't get out till you say my name. <laughs> yes. I'm not letting you out till you say my name. He's fucking stuck. Say it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you really fucking me up?
Round one with me definitely did not go Carson's way, and he's just lucky I let him out of my mount. If you don't want to be stuck there, make sure to like the video, and now we get to see how he does with Mike, a purple bout who's been absent from Jiu-Jitsu for a year. Carson's sitting in headquarters and Mike goes for a shoulder lock. The weird thing is that Carson could pass basically anytime he wants if he just does a little backstep to get past Mike's legs. Mike is trying to control the inside space by going for Carson's wrists, but Carson's knees are making it tough and he steps over Mike's legs to pass with a nice knee cut. But his flurry isn't over because he hits a crucifix and he starts working on a Darce choke on Mike. And it's too bad he doesn't know a guillotine because the number one defense for a Darce is to keep your neck stretched, but this is an easy time to switch off to the other choke. Luckily for Carson, Mike is not a wrestler at all, so he gets to show off his own skills as he circles to the back and now he's working on Mike's turtle. If you don't know what to do from here, you should always look for inside wrist control and to pull their feet out. Controlling the inside space, especially in turtle, is extremely important, otherwise they're never going to give you an opening. Carson was able to pull the ankle away and he gets on Mike's back, throwing in both hooks and then they reset in the middle. Mike uses some of his explosion to keep his hips away from Carson until he can get his butt over the leg. This is an extremely important technique if you ever want to turn into them. Carson knows Mike is just about to escape so he's doing everything he can to keep control over the legs, but it gets dicey because Mike is able to reach his arm out and he's starting to look for a Kimura. Carson needs to rotate his hips out because as long as Mike has the higher hips, this Kimura is going to be nasty. It gets even worse as Mike's able to kick his right leg to the other side and he went all the way from being controlled on his back to now being Carson's half guard. He starts to wrench on the arm at the same time he's trying to explode his leg out from Carson's guard, and once he's in side control, it only takes a little bit of pressure to get the tap. Some other things happen between these two as well, but uh, we don't talk about that. For Carson's final trial, he goes up against Zack and it starts spicy as Zack decides he's going to roll for a Kamara right into side control, then he loses everything. Even though he couldn't keep that position, he does one other thing really well. He's wearing the correct clothing. You can get great looking gear from xmarshall.com and at a discount with promotional code Tyler10. This way you can get great BJJ apparel such as rash guards, shirts, geese, whatever you want, it's all on their website. Make sure to check them out after the video with my promotion code and get yourself some fancy jujitsu gear. Getting back to the roll, it looks like Zack's in a pickle because he's on bottom which is Carson's prime knee cut territory. But as Carson lowers his level, Zack uses a scoop grip basically to pull bottom donkey guard, which is looking bad until Zack's able to clear his left leg and put it in backside 50-50. We see some very questionable defense from Carson as he does absolutely nothing while Zack goes to town wrenching on his leg and he taps him with a knee bar. Now that Carson's been tapped by everybody on the list, it's safe to say he's getting the boot. Zack wants to put a little bit more punishment on him before he's kicked out of the gym, and his weapon of choice is a leg drag which gets him past Carson's lazy guard, then he has no time to waste as he rolls to take the back of Carson, brings him over with a nice lock over the body, and he begins his hand fighting. Zack already has Carson in trouble putting one hand under the neck, and then he decides he's going to grab the wrist, throw it under his leg, and he locks Carson up completely before sinking in the rear naked choke for the tap. Rest in peace, Carson.